the gardener. Five miles from the hustle bustle of the city of London, there was a small town, quiet, lush, and beautiful, where great noblemen and ministers held their summer mansions. This is the story of the most celebrated manor of them all, one which was beautiful beyond imagination. Their gardener Larson manicured the lawns to precision. His relentless passion for gardening made sure that rare flowers lined the stoned paths and covered the crisp stone walls. Delicious fruit hung in great clusters on strong stoic trees, and the best vegetables grew in the elaborate kitchen garden, with the rarest of plants adorning the expansive greenhouse. This mansion was a statement of natural beauty, and the owners were proud of it. They would be certain to visit the estate every summer. What a beautiful estate we have! Oh, the effort we need to put in to maintain it! But is it worth the hard work? After all, the estate bears the name of our family on it. Whatever we do is little as compared to the honor our estate brings us. Your lordship, sir, welcome. Hello, Larson. What have you got for us this year? Sir, I have been tending Indian mangoes for over five years now. Fruit requires a particular kind of soil and special methods of watering. I spent months studying how to grow it, but that is enough, Larson. Do we have a crop? Oh yes, here it is. I picked the best ones for you. I picked them myself. Perfect shape and perfect size. I wish you'd wash up, Larson. Oh, oh, sorry. I have just been digging up for these new radishes from France. Cut these up and let's go see if Larson's Indian mangoes are any good. You should have had them cut up already, Larson. I am sorry, ma'am. I'll just wash up. Are they good, sir, ma'am? They're quite all right, sir. His lordship, Lord Cornwall, is here to see you. Oh, send him in. I am already in, my friend. Hello, so good to see you. Are those Indian mangoes? Well. Hmm. These are delicious. The best I have ever had. When did you go to India? These are not from India. Larson managed to grow them right here on our estate. Larson, you are a miracle worker. Larson, didn't you have work in the garden? Oh, oh yes, ma'am. My radishes. I tell you, you may proceed to the garden, Larson. I tell you, it is so exhausting to have the estate maintained. So, oh, I get so tired. Well, I am here to invite you to a get together tomorrow night. I hope you can make it convenient. It will be a pleasure, Lord Cornwall. We shall be there. And may I take some of the mangoes? Larson is a true master. It is not Larson, but rather the blessings of our ancestors on this land. Do take as many mangoes as you like. I shall have them packed right away. The next night, the Lord and the Mistress went to Lord Cornwall's home. There, with the sumptuous food, the guests were served apples and pears, truly the most delicious any guest had ever had. Truly, the apples and pears are most delicious. Are these from your estate? Who is your gardener, Lord Cornwall? Oh, I do not have a gardener. I am looking for one. These are from the fruiter called John at the local marketplace. He said he got the fruit specially for tonight. Well, the fruiter knows his fruit well. Absolutely exotic. 
We would have expected such fruit from your garden, Lord Maxwell. Lord Maxwell went home an insulted man. Ask Lawson to see me immediately. Yes, sir. Lawson truly must do a better job of the garden. You asked for me, your lordship? Well, we just had the most beautiful delicious apples and pears at Lord Cornwall's. You must go to the fruiter, some John from the local market, and ask him where he got the fruit from. And then learn from whoever the farmer is as to how he got them to be so delicious. Uh, John, from the local market? Well, I just sold him a batch this morning. He said he wanted apples and pears for a very special get-together tonight. I had no idea it was the same get-together that you went for. So those apples and pears were from our garden? Can you prove it? Uh, oh, yes. Here is the bill of the sale, sir. I had tried a special combination of soil and manure to get the fruit to be larger and juicier and... Lawson! You might have had us taste them first. But I did serve them to you last time you were here, and you said they were quite all right. Enough! Now get us some more of the fruit, and we shall send baskets of them to all our friends and tell them that they are from our garden, from the blessings of our ancestors. Truly, Larson, you should be careful about these things. <sighs> now proceed. Larson, you toil day and night in the garden. It is because of you that the garden is the most beautiful estate in the entire country. And yet they never say one word of praise for you. Ah, ah, the packing is done. Now I can go and see to the blue lotuses. Blue lotus? Yes, and don't worry too much about it. As long as they let me do whatever I want in the garden, I am fine. The next morning, Lord Maxwell received an urgent message. The king and princess wanted him to come to the palace immediately for some important business. What is it, dear? The king and the princess have called me to the palace immediately on the business of Alabama. You will have to leave right away. I shall help you pack. Well, shouldn't I carry a gift for the princess? But will you have time to get something for her? The princess is a connoisseur of rare flowers. Call Larson here. So Larson was asked to bring a rare flower from the garden, and he presented his blue lotus to Lord Maxwell. Are you sure it is rare? Oh, yes, your lordship. It is found only in the high mountains of India and Tibet. But I... Enough! Larson, the melons! Melons? Yes, the royal chef requested me to send up some melons to the castle. The royal family had loved our melons last year. Do you have proof? Oh, here is the note the royal chef sent me this morning, sir. You should have had us taste them. I did, ma'am, but you said that they were quite all right. Last summer, the royal gardener's crop failed, so he asked me for some, and he presented them to the chef and to the royal family. Now, don't get all muddled. You must leave now, dear. Bye, dear. Keep the melons in the carriage. Lord Maxwell presented the flower to the princess, and she was delighted. She had the flower put in a crystal bowl right in the center of the conference table. But a jealous courtier remarked to Lord Maxwell, The flower you gave the princess is quite common. Isn't it? You mustn't let Larson fool you like this, Lord Maxwell. There is a gardener I know who is much better than Larson. You must employ him instead. Lord Maxwell was very angry to hear what the courtier had said. He went back to his manor to take Larson to task. When he reached the manor, Larson was in the garden talking to Lady Maxwell. Larson? Please, 
Let me take these old dead trees down. I shall grow a patch of oats here, and lots of birds will then come into the garden to eat, and the garden will be full of their happy chatter, and will come alive with their vibrant colors. Those trees have been there forever, Larson. From before you came here, you will not touch them. But, sir, I thought... Don't forget, Larson. This garden belongs to our family. How dare you decide how to run it? I am sorry, sir. You will stay here no longer. The good courtier is sending another gardener to us, and your services will no longer be required. Sir! You gave me a common flower to give the princess, calling it rare. Now I shall have to write a letter to her to apologize. But, sir... Don't make me repeat. Just go. So Larson had to leave the manor. And the beautiful garden he had tended with such love and care for so many years. In the meanwhile, Lord Maxwell wrote a letter of apology to the princess. Your Highness, I deeply regret to inform you that the blue lotus I had presented to you on my recent visit to the palace was not rare as I had been told it was. I apologize for the oversight and I hope you will forgive me and understand that I had no intention of deliberately misrepresenting facts before you. Yours sincerely, Lord Maxwell. Dear Lord Maxwell, I do know that the flower you presented to me was indeed a rare one. Even if it were common in India and Tibet, it is rare in our part of the world. And it is really incredible that your gardener Larsen managed to grow it in our climate. For that, he must be applauded. I have heard so much about your estate and Larsen's garden that I should really like to visit. As it is late this year, I propose to visit next summer. If it does not inconvenience you in any way, yours sincerely, Princess Flora. Great preparations were made for the visit of the princess. New seeds were procured. New flowers bought. All of it with the new gardener for the Maxwells. Never considered it to be Larson's garden. It was always theirs, and theirs alone. In the meanwhile, Larson had found a home with Lord Cornwall and was working his magic in Lord Cornwall's garden. A year passed. It was summer again, and the Maxwells awaited the visit of the princess. The princess reached the small town. Stop! Coachman, stop! A patch of oats that the birds can feed on? Only Larson could have thought of it. This simply must be the place. Your Highness, I am quite sure that Lord Maxwell's estate is a little way ahead. And I am sure that this must be the estate. This has to be the most beautiful garden in the whole country. It can only be the handiwork of the good Larson. Larson? Is that you? Yes. I am Princess Flora. Princess, I am so sorry, ma'am. I must wash up. It just goes to show with how much passion you do your work. Do you have my favorite melons? Yes, I shall bring them out right away. In the meanwhile, the coachman had sent a message to Lord Maxwell that the princess had arrived. They rushed to Lord Cornwall's estate. Princess Flora, your highness, our estate is a little up the hill. Is it? But Larson is here. Then Princess Flora was told of how Larson had been made to leave after giving a common flower for the princess. Princess Flora heard 
she was wise enough to realize that the selfish Maxwells had never appreciated Larson for his great talent and love of gardening. She decided to put that right. Larson, you are a wonderfully talented and passionate gardener. And I give you a garden and a mansion all of your own, where you can do all the gardening you want, in any way that you want, and you shall be paid from the royal treasury. Let all who see your garden call it Larson's Paradise, and that is how it shall be known all over the country. Finally, Larson got the appreciation he deserved.